All right, we are building the first ever electric winch tractor, I believe, to ever be made. So we got to figure out how to get that done. That's what we're doing today here in Stony Plain, Alberta. All right, so where we're at for these builds, the MCON, the undisclosed truck, the International, all the pickup trucks are underway. They've already had their engineering finished. They're in production. We've been working on the engineering for that Tolka logging truck in the video, but how are we gonna build this? There's some questions that we need answered. We gotta be able to work with companies here like Marcep. That's why we're here today. We're gonna to be going through their shop on a tour. DJ's on his way up from Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. He should be meeting us here in about 30, 40 minutes. Why don't we do a shop tour? Let's have a look at what you do, what you're capable of. I wanna get a sense of where things are going on the frame rails. Once DJ gets here, we're gonna go up into their boardroom. We're gonna sit down. We're gonna meet with our engineers, have a Google meeting, and we're gonna ask all the questions. Where's a hydraulic tank gonna go? Where's things going on the frame rails? How are we doing this? So I'm here with Sheldon from Marsep. What is Marsep? What do you guys do? Thanks, Chase. And I wanna welcome you to Marsep. We've been in business over 25 years. We've been manufacturing on and off-road equipment, trucks, trailers, rig ups, big off-road stuff. Our customer base has been worldwide. We've been known for building things that are international and local. We do a lot of different stuff. We're really excited to be working with you guys. We have never ever worked on an electric truck. This is brand new. This is this is really exciting. We're gonna work with Edison to build them these winch trucks and we're really excited about that. There's gonna be a lot to figure out. We have to look at everything from the front bumper right down to the winch placement, the hydraulic tank placement. I have so many questions for you, Chase. I need to look at how this is all gonna unfold and we're really excited to get started here. Awesome, well, let's go have a look at these things. Let's go talk to the let's engineers, let's figure it out. Come on in. So cutting out a set of low bed ramps here. You bet. Yeah, Chase, we cut everything on these tables here. We have two water jet tables. They're five by 10 tables, and we are cutting out everything that bolts onto these trucks. Obviously with the winch tractors and any of the bed trucks we're doing with the truck frames, you can't weld stuff all over the frame. So a lot of this material, we're getting a layout, a DXF layout from factories or from builders like yourself. We'll get an actual frame layout. We have the ability of cutting all of our frame holes with absolute accuracy with the water jet and take it from there. So you can go right to like pinpoint accuracy off the computer. So when we get everything, we'll put it all out. We'll send it off to our frame rail manufacturer. They'll put the holes in the frame rails. And then with a computer pinpoint accuracy, your holes will be the same. So theory, it just drops on. We don't have to sit there with a mag drill for a whole day. That is the holes. beauty of working with computers. You yeah. bet. And, uh, and again, like the ability of cutting with these tables, we can cut everything from mild steel to the quench and tempered steels without any heat affected areas because we're using water to cut. There's some um, stainless, put some nice Mirrored stainless. It. We're cutting mirrored stainless daily on these tables. So it's uh, it's great right down to the finishing end of it. So what do we got here? You're bending up all the parts you need? Yeah, you bet, Chase. So this area is our, this is our Derma press brake, 175 ton automated press brake. So everything from toolbox doors, toolboxes, all the fenders we build on our trucks, we try to hammer that out as much as we can in house here. Again, we're cutting a lot of parts on our water jet table. They come over here, form it up. That's pretty detailed. That's that a good example of our water jet tables in action. In the way of forming things on our press brake, we can do everything from carbon steel to, again, the decorative stainless, all kinds of stuff. It's a great asset to have this kind of equipment in house. It was many years ago we were we were farming all this stuff out. We dealt with a lot of local suppliers. That's cool. I mean, that's got to take a lot to figure out exactly what angle you need bending that. Well, it does, but again, with in-house engineering and drafting, we have a lot of this stuff is drawn up already, and then we bring it out to the station here. And the computer kind of figures out exactly what you need. So this the, is an automated table, so you bet. How often, though, do you get it, like, slightly crooked? No, never, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would be all fuckered up on that. Yeah. Okay, so we got a frame rail here. How come winch tractors have this extra tubing on top? There's a couple of, couple of reasons behind it, Chase. I mean, we're building a subframe on here to reinforce the whole frame, to add some girth to it, as well as to place the fifth wheel on. 
Obviously when this is done, we're gonna have a set of ramps that are all tied into here. The fifth wheel is all gonna be located there so everything flows together. Get them the fifth wheel height they need. A lot of these trucks aren't just highway hauling, they're working off-road, you know all about it. You're gonna need some fender clearance and you're gonna need a fifth wheel height so you're not taking out fenders and stuff um, like that. You see on highway trucks, they're, they're trying to get that as much volume, so their fifth wheel is really low. The problem is that you see on a highway truck, if they're a little cattywampus when they come up, the tire binds into the trailer and they get hung up. So you need the That's extra right. fifth wheel height so that this can go through cross ditches or what you need on an angle without binding up. That's right. Chase, you're looking at a hydraulic tank here we built. Now you can see all these form pieces on the floor here. These are all pieces that we've cut them in-house, we form them in-house, we build our own hydraulic tank. This tank has been welded out, so once it's welded, we do test it. Low pressure, but we soap test everything to ensure we don't have any leaks. That's a typical winch tractor hydraulic tank. But this is something, obviously, that it's important to work together on because this goes underneath the winch. In our frame rail, that's where we're putting the batteries. So, in theory, a normal truck would have a drive line that takes it, so you do have some clearance, so it may work, but we may have to work together to make this hydraulic tank a little bit custom, either a lower profile or remount it onto the side of the truck. Yeah, you bet, Chase. And that's kind of fully expecting getting into your, your chassis that we will have to probably do either a custom suction line. It'll be a custom tank, which again, isn't completely uncommon here. I mean, as you can see, all these tanks look like they're the same, but quite often we get into different units where, you know, some of them will have a, an auxiliary transmission mounted right underneath here. Obviously right. this isn't gonna work anymore. Yeah. So we end up having a, change things that's almost the normal now so i don't think your builds are going to be too much of a challenge in that regard but but it'll be custom for sure well this is where we get into like these beasts like the c500 here this is a custom truck like this is, these trucks are not built on an assembly line no they're uh, they're not you're right about that you guys do the whole bumper rig up we will <laughs> yeah so this great example this truck just came in the shop it's uh just arrived from the customer so once it comes in, we start off with a bumper, again, all the winch plates, all the subframe down the side. The rest is all really up to the customer. I mean, a lot of people deal with us at Mars up because they know that we're willing to work with everyone's ideas. I think our best ideas come from our customers. I've been doing this a long time, but I'm not a rig mover. I don't drive trucks, but I work with the customer's ideas to, to give them what they want. That's just it. That's our whole principle too, is that it's the customer that knows what works best for them. It's not gonna be a bunch of engineers sitting in an office telling the customer, this is what you need. I think that's been the problem with a lot of like EV vehicles is that it's a bunch of guys in Silicon Valley or wherever and tech pros and engineers saying, this is what you need. This is what you need to make for the transmission. And like you see in electric, like we've had customers, it's not that they hate on electric, is that they say, that's not gonna meet my need. That Tesla said, is not gonna go do a rig move. It's like, that's not what we need. You gotta to listen to your customer or it just doesn't work. You guys, you're doing a trailer here too? We do manufacture trailers. This is for one of our customers. They're a vac outfit. So we're building all their chassis for them. This trailer will complete it. It'll have an air system on it, an air brake system. And then they carries on to them to the final stage. They work on putting the vessel on it and all the rest of it. Yeah, and here's another example of where companies work together in manufacturing is that everyone we've been to, nobody makes the whole thing. There seems to be a misunderstanding in manufacturing, whether we're in China or North America at any supplier, somebody does some part and then passes it to the next person who then uses that part. Like, 100%, 100%, yeah. A lot of people are asking us online, how are we doing like, you guys are building trucks, but now you got to build a winch rig up. You got to build a that snow plow rig up. Like we're, we're not building the winch rig up. We're not building the snow plow. We're not building the logging bunks and all that. We just build the truck and the chassis. And another company makes our frame rails, punches the holes. Another company makes the suspension and you then bet. we bolt it together. I think if you look at a lot of the, the finished products, it is a combination of manufacturers working together. Yeah. This is a truck that we're about halfway through the build, maybe a little farther. So, you know, we've got a young fellow up here. He's assembling everything in the front right now. So he's welding out the toolbox carriers. The back tail end is more or less assembled already. Fenders are being fed up. Won't be long till this truck's on the way to paint shop. Now we're in the finishing bay where they've been painted and they're coming over here. You bet. So this is the finishing end of it. As the trucks are, uh, as they're all finished in paint, they come here, we've got a team team here they're doing all the hydraulics they're doing the electrical 
fitting all the fenders, stainless. The complete PDI process happens in this shop and after this point it gets cleaned and it's released to the customer. So this is one of our winch and headache racks. Again, it's all been painted with all the parts for one of our builds. Pretty standard build. It's all painted, it's removable from the truck. The whole headache rack and the winch rack, we build them as one assembly so it can be removed. Yeah, this is painted up and the guys will be assembling on one of these trucks here and getting it all plumbed in. This is one of the cool things I like here. Chain hangers on the outside of the fuel tank so you don't have to pull them out. Normally you either have to like reach in between your tank and your truck or you gotta pull the chain hangers out. You just throw your tire chains right here and easy to access. Yeah, you bet Chase. That is pretty common. A lot of guys do like them out here. One of the options we offer, again, we work with everyone's ideas. Some guys like the roller bearing ones. Some guys just like a solid post and then you have the, the guys over there that like them along the tank, so we just work with everyone's ideas. DJ's here now, so he's packed out a few trucks, so we'll see what he likes and we'll go over it. You guys know we're building uh, this winch truck for Royal Oil Field here with DJ, so he's got a lot of experience in it. He's just joined us now and we're gonna head up to the office, figure out what he wants in this rig up. How do we make that happen on our end? How's Marcep gonna make that happen? And how do we get DJ the best truck we can? Well, I think that was a pretty productive day. We had a meeting, we brought Daniel, we brought Jacob in, our engineering leads, design leads. We were able to sit down, go over some of the features we wanted, how we wanted the winch rig out. We were able to bring up some of their concerns. How's hydraulic tank gonna fit? What size hydraulics? What are we gonna need to run? How are we gonna power those hydraulics? Now they're gonna be able to look at their kilowatt sizes. We'll be able to look at wheelbase requirements, length requirements. We went over weight. How much weight do we want towards the steer axle? How much more do we want to the rear? Where does our fifth wheel need to slide? How big do we want that sleeper and everything to be? Now we got the information I think we need. Jacob and Daniel are now gonna work. Over the next little while, we're going to get some 3D files sent over so they can start placing things onto the chassis. That estimated could take a little bit. They got a few things to work on. They're working on the Toco logging truck right now, placing things on that. But luckily, these two trucks we're going to be keeping very similar. That was one of our concerns is that we are going to have to fundamentally shift batteries. By keeping it similar to that Toco logging truck, we'll be able to build bang, 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 all the same. That'll cut down the design and engineering time. Once we're ready, then we place the order for the frame rails, get that sent over. While we're doing that, we're gonna start ordering some of the other parts and hopefully they start showing up. I think we're all excited about this. This is a, <laughs> well, there's a lot of excitement. Yeah, this is a really productive meeting. Glad we came up here and now we can officially get started on the engineering. It's no longer just a design concept with images. We now are moving on to the full engineering stage. Yeah. Now that we've finished the other customer's trucks. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, your truck's on the last one on the list. <laughs>